I looked at her as if she were some kind of alien life form, as my mind processed what she had told me at dinner. She waited until the freshly baked apple pie was cut, and then she stunned me. There's no easy way for me to do this, so I'll get right to it. The children left. I've been a damn good wife, mother, and homemaker for the past 24 years. I put you, the kids, and the house first, and decided it was time to do something for myself. I'm 45 and still quite attractive. I need to do this while I still have some marketability. I love you and you know it, but this is something I've wanted to do for almost 15 years, and I've accepted that you won't join me and be a part of it. I hate to see 24 good years go down the drain, but if you want to get divorced because of this, I'll just have to live with it. I have a date on Friday night, so unless you want to reheat leftovers for dinner, you'll have to eat out. I just sat there and looked at her until she said, say something, Rob. I shrugged and said, good luck. Good luck? What do you mean by this? Good luck with your new life. And since you are no longer in mine, I don't want you in my bedroom. So get out. Tonight. We can live in the same house until it sells. I'll call the realtor in the morning and start the process. But I warn you that, although we will live in the same house, you better never bring your lovers here. Otherwise, I may kill you both. Sell a house? I don't want to sell the house. I love this place. Then you need to find money to buy out my share. In a divorce, the property will be divided, which means the house will be sold. We only have two years left before it's due, and our net worth is about 280000 so you'll need to raise 140000 You can think about where to get the money while you're leaving the bedroom. I suggest you start right now, since I want to go to bed early. I'll have a busy day tomorrow. I will talk to a realtor, hire an attorney, and do whatever else needs to be done. Why are you in such a hurry with this? Why not? You just ended our marriage, so I don't see the need to beat around the bush. Just get on with it and do it. But I haven't even done that yet. Doesn't matter. The in-your-face attitude you just showed by telling me what you were going to do told me what you thought of me. Whether you have sex with your boyfriend on Friday or not, we will still break up. It's best for you to start moving your things. Whatever is left of your things in the room when I go to bed will be thrown out of the bedroom window. We need to talk about this, Rob. No, we have nothing to discuss. You're a lying bitch and I don't want anything to do with you anymore. I'm not a traitor. Yes, you are a traitor. Amanda, you just told me you have a date on Friday evening. It's not that you're going to look for it, but that you already have it. This means that you met and talked with another man with the intention of arranging a sexual encounter. And, in my opinion... This is the same as cheating. Now get out of my sight and start putting your things away. I got up from the table and headed to my man cave, which doubled as our garage. While working on my latest project, a 1965 Pontiac Catalina convertible, I remembered when this nonsense started. That was about 15 years ago, and it was all because of who I was and what I did before I got married. In high school, I was a real leader. Pauline French took my virginity on my 18th birthday, and I loved it. So much so that I spent a lot of time looking for more and ended up sleeping with several members of the opposite sex. Well, to be honest, there were more than a few. I was a typical use em and leave em asshole until I went to college, and a couple of girls took the trouble to cure me of my bad habits. I used and abandoned both of them, and they got together and started a crusade to make sure this didn't happen to other girls. If they saw me with a girl, they would immediately come up and tell her about me. By my senior year, word had spread, and I couldn't get a date to save my life. My freshman year of senior year, I met Amanda Martin and fell head over heels in love with her. She didn't want anything to do with me. They told me what kind of guy you are, and I know what you want, and it's not going to happen. I kept trying until one day she said, Should I call the police on you and file a complaint? As far as I understand, you are stalking me. Do I need to get a restraining order against you? Leave me alone. Last time. I don't want anything to do with you. I'm not going to be another notch on your bedpost. I received the message and finally realized what my attitude towards girls had cost me. 
I didn't go on any dates for the rest of my senior year, and I was torn apart every time I saw Amanda. Graduation came, and I went to work for Athena Group in their marketing department. It's no boast to say that I was a good-looking guy and in pretty decent shape, and I attracted the attention of several single girls who worked in my department. In fact, a married couple also showed interest. None of them knew my reputation, so you could say it was a rich environment for someone like me. But somewhere along the line, a funny thing happened. I didn't take advantage of it. I think the easiest way to explain it would be to say that I grew up, and when I was in senior year, I realized that I would never have a serious relationship with a girl like Amanda unless I changed my ways. God knows I really wanted this relationship with Amanda. A year passed, and although I went on dates often, I was pretty much on my best behavior. I actually started a friends with benefits relationship with a girl, and it lasted about six months and ended when she got a job in another state. Even though I dated a lot, I had never met a girl who made me feel the way Amanda did. And that feeling was my guide, my baseline, and what I was looking for. Honestly, I was starting to feel like I would never find it. One evening, after working late, I stopped by the Purple Onion on my way home from work. I was a regular there, and by the time I sat down on the bar stool, Susie at the counter had already put my vodka tonic on the counter. I had been there for probably half an hour when I heard a noise behind me. I heard a woman say, let me go. And a man's voice said, there's no way in hell you're going to screw me over, lady. Dinner, drinks, a show, and you've been teasing me all evening. So there's no way you can get away with just telling me good night. Let me go, idiot. No way, bitch. I'm going to see you tonight, at least on your lap. I'm usually a guy who minds his own business, but this asshole acting like this and saying crap like that out loud and in public just pisses me off. I stood up, walked up to him, and told him to get his ass out of the bar. Who's going to force me? You? I bet your ass. Fuck you, he said, and attacked me. I blocked the blow and hit him hard. He staggered and I hit him twice more, grabbed him, turned him around, twisted his arm, and led him out the door into the parking lot. The door didn't have a handle, it was a pushrod type, and I pressed his body directly against the pusher to open the door. His body hit the bar at the same time, his face hit the door, and blood started pouring out of his nose. I walked him straight to the dumpster, and then picked him up saying, you're going with the rest of the trash, and threw him into the dumpster. If you're smart, you won't go back to the bar. I didn't return either because my good mood had disappeared. I returned home to my apartment, took a shower and went to bed. Three days passed before I looked at the look again. And, as usual, Susie had my vodka tonic on the counter when I walked up to the bar stool. She went to the register and then came back and handed me an envelope. What is this? I asked. When you took that asshole out of here last time, you left your money lying on the bar counter. You tip well, but not that good. So I write it down for you in the cash register. I took the envelope and put it in my pocket without looking into it. He took out his wallet and threw a 20 on the bar for the drink. Susie thrust them back at me and said, Your money's no good here today. Why? The lady you saved last night told me to call her and let her know when you'll be back again. I have to buy you a drink at her expense to keep you here until she arrives. Are you kidding me? Not in the least. The lady wants to thank you personally. I was finishing my third vodka tonic when Susie placed a glass of white wine in front of the stool to my right. And before I could ask her what it was for, someone sat down on the stool. I looked and my jaw dropped when Amanda Martin smiled at me and said, Hello, Rob. Long time no see. I was so stunned to see her that I couldn't find words. What's the matter, Rob? You have never been a silent person. I'm just surprised to see you after all these years. It could have happened three days earlier if you had returned after sending Dirk out of here that night. Was he pestering you? So it was. Unfortunately, he was just another one of my many mistakes. I don't seem to be able to choose a good man. I had no idea what I could say to that, so I shrugged it off and asked her how she was doing and then what she'd been up to since she left school. We talked for a while and then I asked her if she had eaten yet. But she hadn't, so I asked if she wanted to join me for dinner. By the time dessert and coffee arrived, 
I had a date for the next evening, and that date led to many more. And six months later, I asked Amanda to marry me, and she accepted. Amanda went to our marriage bed as a virgin, a fact that was to have a serious impact on our lives in the future. A year after our wedding, Jason William joined us, and a year and a half later, Amber Marie became part of our family. We had been married five years when Amanda struck me with one of the questions that is known to strike fear into the heart of a husband. You know I love you, right? Of course I know. And you know that I would never do anything to harm our marriage, right? Don't walk around, Amanda. Spit it out. You know that I entered our marriage as a virgin, right? Get to work, Amanda. You had so many experiences before we became a couple, so I know you had a wide range of experiences. I always wondered what I was missing out on by remaining a virgin until my wedding. I just sat there and looked at her silently as she continued. Do you remember Sally Stiles? I remembered. She was one of the girls Amanda hung out with in college, and I knew they kept in touch. I nodded in agreement. Well, Sally and I talk a lot, and she was telling me about her sex life with her husband, Ralph. I admitted that you were the only man I'd ever had sex with, and I admitted that I was curious about what I'd missed by being a virgin. So what does this all mean, Amanda? I don't know how to say this, Rob. What to say? I'm afraid you'll take it the wrong way. What will I perceive incorrectly? I would like to meet another man. You have to be kidding me. Just listen to me, Rob. I love you and am completely happy with you and our marriage. I just want to see what sex is like with someone else. No love or affection. Just the physical act is all I want to experience. And I don't have to go out and try to pick up someone at random. Sally and Ralph belong to the open relationship group and she said that she and Ralph would recommend us. All participants are tested every two weeks, so it is safe. We would do this together. It would give you a chance for a little variety and allow me to satisfy my curiosity. You must be out of your mind if you think I would agree to something like that. The time to satisfy your curiosity was before you got married, not during it. My answer is to tell you to stop talking to Sally and letting her fill your head with garbage. Everything I wanted... No! Not just no, but damn no. Just give it up, Amanda. I don't want to hear any more about this. The house was a little chilly for the next couple of days, and then everything went back to normal. But when I told Amanda I didn't want to hear about it anymore, it didn't seem to get through to her. She brought up the topic a couple of times over the next few years, always when we were drinking and having fun at parties. It was a typical evening on her 38th birthday. I invited her to dinner, and then we went out for drinks and dancing. A few drinks and dances late into the night, and when I felt in love and began to caress her on the dance floor, she pointed at the couple and said, She's definitely sexy. Wouldn't you like to try it? She was definitely a sexy-looking lady, and if I was single, I would definitely be interested. And then Amanda said, And he's not so bad either. Maybe we could meet them. I knew she was fishing again, so I just said, no need. I already have the one I want for tonight. This has happened three or more times over the years, and although I cannot prove it, I know that at least some of them were not accidental. I discovered this one evening when Sally and Ralph came and sat next to a couple Amanda was trying to get me interested in. There was no doubt in my mind that they were friends of Sally and Ralph and that Amanda knew who they were and was hoping that I would take the bait. The only thing I took away from this evening was the idea that I needed to watch Amanda more closely. She was still friends with Sally, and Sally had to introduce her to the couple so she knew who they were. And if she communicated like that with those who do not honor the bonds of marriage, what else could she do? She would occasionally go out for drinks with people she worked with and have a bachelorette party every now and then. I really didn't think she was cheating on me yet because everything I had heard about open groups said they didn't accept singlers. I didn't think Amanda would pick up any guy to go with. I mean, why would she do that? If she slept with a guy, she wouldn't have to go to this group to get the experience she wanted, right? All this happened on Amanda's 39th birthday. I asked her what she would like to receive for her birthday, and she replied, I want you to let me sleep with another man just one time. I only want to try this once and I will never ask again. I'll tell you what I'll do, Amanda. On your birthday, 
I will meet with a lawyer, fill out the paperwork, and get it registered in your name. Once we get divorced, you'll be able to have sex with all the other men you want and have the full experience. This is the last time I want to hear this crap. Let me be absolutely clear. The only way you can have sex with another man without me throwing you out with the trash is if we get divorced or I die. Remember this well in your head. I'll even go one step further to make this as clear as possible. If you ever bring me to this shit again, I will divorce your ass and let you have as much sex as you want. I believed I had finally gotten through to her because she never brought it up again. Until the night she told me she was going to do it, whether I liked it or not. The next morning, I actually met with the realtor and lawyer. It would be 50-50 meat cut and dried in half. Amanda made the same amount as me. So there was no child support, and the children grew up and moved away. Perhaps the only thing we would have to quarrel about is who took what out of the house. I don't believe Amanda knew what she had set in motion until she came home from work Wednesday night and found a for sale sign on a pole in our yard. And it really hit home when she was served with divorce papers at work on Thursday. She was furious. I mean, she was absolutely furious when she came home on Thursday night and attacked me for notifying her in front of her co-workers. Quite appropriate, I said. What the hell do you mean? I can pretty much account for your time, so if you were talking about dating a man, I assume you must have been doing it at work. So it seems appropriate to me that since the breakdown of our marriage began at your workplace, that is where you should be notified. Nothing started at work. Doesn't matter. What needed to be done was done, and as far as I'm concerned, now that you've been notified, you can go and have sex with other guys to your heart's content. I stood up, put on my coat, and headed towards the door. Where are you going? To the bar. I'm going to drink some beer, play some pool, and start my new life as a bachelor. We need to talk, Rob. No, no, Amanda. You said everything you needed to say when you looked me straight in the eye and told me that you were going to cheat on me on purpose and that if I didn't like it, I could file for divorce. Well, Amanda, I didn't like it, so I filed for divorce. I left the house and headed to Bud's bar. I drank beer and played billiards until half past ten and then went home. Amanda was already in bed and she was still in her room when I left for work in the morning, so I didn't know if she'd gotten dressed for the date or if she'd brought a change of clothes to work. After work, I went to the village inn for dinner, and when I got home at seven, I was surprised to see Amanda's car in the garage. I assumed that she must have come home and changed clothes after work, and that her boyfriend had picked her up here at home. The guy must have balls the size of basketballs, if he could do that, knowing I could be there. With that thought in mind, I walked into the house and found Amanda sitting at the kitchen table with a glass of wine in her hands. There was no shortage of sarcasm in my voice as I said, The date is over. Are you all set? Was he that worthless? Fuck you, Rob. There was no date. There was never any date. I made it all up. Yes? Amazing. Like I'm going to believe it. I've always wanted to do this, Rob, and I felt that if it was going to happen... It had to be done while I still had my looks. Sally told me that I should just tell you that I'm going to do it, and that you don't want to lose me so you'll go along with it. I told you a long time ago to stay away from that stupid bitch, but oh no, you couldn't listen to me and listen to her instead. How do you do it? It's not funny, Rob. Everything got out of control. You need to call a realtor and take the house off the market. Call your lawyer and stop this divorce nonsense. Why would I want to do this? I just told you, there was no date there. It was all a bluff to try to get you to agree with me on what I wanted. There's a little problem with that, Amanda. What? I don't want to believe you. My point is that you didn't expect me to take a hard line, and when I did, it shocked you, and now you're trying to minimize the damage. Most likely, you called your boyfriend and asked for time off, and now you are trying to save your marriage. I don't buy it you might as well call your beau back and tell him that everything is okay after all. Before you leave, make sure everything in your room is tidy, just in case you're not home by nine in the morning. At ten o'clock, the couple will come to look at the house. Good night. Have fun on your date. I really hope it's worth what it cost you. She started crying when I left the room, and there was once a time when that would have made me rush to her, hold her in my arms, and comfort her. 
but that was before. As I climbed into bed, I really wondered if Amanda was telling the truth. It was possible, but I couldn't be sure, and it was damning that I couldn't be sure. Then a thought occurred to me. It was a little over the top, but it could work. It was a risky move, but I wouldn't mind trying. I stood up and took out my cell phone. Since Amanda spent so much time with Sally, I had Sally on speed dial in case I needed to contact Amanda. I called Sally, and when she answered, I told her I needed a big favor. Can you send a message to Amanda without ruining her date? She canceled the date. She should be home and talking to you. About? I haven't returned home yet. Then I guess I better hurry up. I passed out and went to bed. So much for Amanda's story that it was all a bluff. In the morning, I made the bed and cleaned the room. When I got to the kitchen, Amanda was there, and it didn't look like she had a good night. She actually made coffee, so I poured myself a cup. Is everything okay in your room? I asked. You're not really going to sell the house, are you? Of course I'm going to. I don't want a divorce, Rob. Please. This was all a big mistake. I don't want a divorce. This is what you don't want, Amanda. What about what I didn't want? I've told you over and over again that I'm not going to share you with another guy, and I've told you countless times that I don't want to hear anything like that again. Did I get what I wanted, Amanda? No, I didn't get it. You keep bringing this up, even though I keep telling you I don't want to hear it. There's no reason to give you what you want when I can't get what I want myself. I won't do this again, Rob. I promise I won't do this again. You probably won't do it, but that won't stop you from wanting to do it. And I believe that with the thought in your mind that you need to do it, while, as you put it, you still have the marketability, you're still going to talk to Sally and listen to her talk about how great it is to meet different men for sex, and you're going to do it. You will decide that since you cannot force me to go with you, you will do it, without telling me. I'll catch you, and then I'll go to jail for what I did to the guy you cheated with. When I get out of prison, I will divorce you for infidelity. Since the divorce is going to happen anyway, it would be better if I do it now due to irreconcilable differences and avoid going to jail. I would never do that to you. Yes, I really want to do this, but only if you don't mind. That's why I keep raising this issue. I figure that once you realize that I really, really want to do this, you'll let me. These are stupid thoughts on your part, Amanda. Have I ever, even once, in the last 15 years given any sign of softening my attitude? I didn't do it. This will never happen with my approval. And I believe that you will understand this. And when you understand, you will go ahead and do it, thinking that it will only be one time and you can hide it from me. The problem is that you can't do it. I know you too well, Amanda, and I can tell when you're trying to force something on me. For example, you told me that the date story was a bluff, and I could tell you were lying. You actually had a date. You thought that as soon as you gave me your ultimatum, I would accept it, because you knew that I loved you and would not want to let you go. I surprised you when I said, okay, I will file for divorce. Suddenly you realized that you were wrong in your assumptions and that I was going to let you go, so you canceled your date and started doing damage control. Deny it all you want, Amanda, but you can't fucking lie. I could tell you were lying through your teeth when you told me the dating story was a bluff. You actually had a date. I know that, and I'm tired of this crap, so I'm letting you get what you want, but there's a price for letting you do it, and that price is a scam. As far as I understand... Now that you have been notified, you are free to do whatever you wish. Study other men to your heart's content, Amanda, because your marriage to me is over. So, is your room ready to be viewed? No, this is not so, and this will not happen. I'm taking time off from work, and the kitchen won't look so great either. I'm going to bake a lot of baked goods today, and you know what a mess it can get. In addition... I will walk them through all the rooms and point out any shortcomings. I might even mention that we haven't gotten the cockroach problem under control yet. I guess I can't stop you from doing this. But if you do, do it knowing what it will cost you. And what would it be? I'll go. I will stop making house payments and stop paying utilities. Ultimately, the house will be repossessed, and we will lose it and your share of what we could have gotten in the sale. Another option is that you pay off your house payments 
and pay for electricity, gas, water, and telephone. Frankly, I don't believe you can do this on your salary alone, but it's something you'll have to decide. I got up from the table, poured coffee into my travel mug, and said, I'm leaving for work. I'll call the real estate agent this afternoon and see how the showing went. If he tells me that you tried to sabotage the sale, I will make the necessary calls to transfer the utility bills into your name and allow you to make your next payment on the house, which is due this coming Wednesday. Damn it, Robert. Can't you get it into your stubborn head that I don't want a divorce? Can't you get it into your head that I no longer care what you want or don't want? I stopped caring what you wanted when you looked me straight in the eyes and told me you were going to do it, and that if I didn't like it, I could get a divorce? This was the end of our marriage, Amanda. You gave me a choice, and I chose divorce. She looked at me with a gloomy expression on her face as I left for work. At one o'clock in the afternoon, I called my friend Mark. How did everything go? She stayed away. Was the room she used accessible for viewing? As neat as a pin, even in the kitchen. My brother liked this house. He almost wishes it was actually for sale. If our plan doesn't work, then maybe it won't. My cousin and his girlfriend are going to see it tomorrow, and my sister and brother-in-law are going to see it the day after tomorrow. After your cousin watches this, I'll tell her that you called me with an offer. Do you really think this will work? I hope so, but if it doesn't happen, I'll at least try. When I returned home from work, Amanda was sitting on the living room couch reading a book. When I entered, she put down her book and asked, Should I make dinner or are you going out again tonight? If you're going to cook for yourself, I'll stay at home. But if you're going to cook just for me, I'll go out. I haven't eaten anything all day, so I'll go cook something. And she got up and headed to the kitchen. While she was preparing dinner, I went down to the basement and checked the recorder I had plugged into the phone line the day Mark put up the for sale sign in the yard. The only interesting call was the one she made as soon as I left for work that morning. Hello? Hello, it's me. He just left for work. Left for. Are there any changes? No. I think he's really going through it. The realtor is bringing someone to look at the house this morning. I don't know why you're so upset about this. This frees you up to do what we talked about. I don't want to do this if it costs me my marriage. It seems to me that you've all almost gone crazy. If Rob does get a divorce, you can meet Rudy again. You almost broke his heart when you canceled the other day. He was really looking forward to inviting you to a meeting. There were a couple of other guys there who were also disappointed when you didn't show up. Not as disappointed as I was when our plan didn't work. You assured me that Rob would rather give up than lose me. And I don't understand this at all. This man loves you. Everyone knows that he worships the ground you walk on. He should have given in to your ultimatum. Well, he didn't, and now I can't even get him to talk to me. Considering the tough position he takes, what could you say? I don't know, but there must be something I can say or do that will make him end this. I hate to say it, but... The only thing I can see that will work is if you promise him that the issue will never come up again. The way things are going, I don't think he'll believe me. He doesn't believe a single word I say. He says he knows I lied when I told him the dating story was just a bluff. Oh shit. What? He knows you were lying because he called me and asked if I could give you a message without interfering with your date, and I told him that you canceled the date so you could be home and talk to him. Oh God, what should I do now? I don't know if you can do anything, girl. Do not say that. I can't lose Rob. I just cannot. Why not? Once you are free of it, you can have all the experiences you want. Besides Rudy, I know a good half dozen guys we could set you up with. I thought you were my friend Sally, but it seems I'm wrong. It seems like your only interest in me is that you have someone to set up your single friends with who want to join your group. It won't be me, Sally. Never. Not without Rob's consent and I finally accepted that it just wasn't going to happen. He will never agree to this. Goodbye, Sally. I rewound the recorder and went back upstairs. I was watching the evening news until Amanda called me to dinner. We ate in silence, and it was only when Amanda stood up to start cleaning that she spoke. I don't want a divorce, Rob. 
What should I do to get you to give up the divorce and take the house off the market? It doesn't matter, Amanda, because you can't do it. How can you know this? Because you had 15 years to do it, and you couldn't do it. There's no reason to think you can do that now. What? Stop this other man nonsense. The problem we're facing now is that you could promise me you'd do this. But I don't trust your words anymore. I can't help but believe that even if you promise to give it up, and a situation arises that makes you believe you can do it and get away with it, you will go ahead and do it. I will always remember you saying that you should have done this while you still had your looks. And then there's the fact that you already lied to me about the date. No, Amanda, I just can't imagine that happening. You might want to start looking for housing. I spoke with a real estate agent this afternoon, and the couple that looked at the house seemed to really like it. He thinks they are going to propose. It's just so unfair. I don't want to lose this place. You don't have to lose it. You can always buy me out of my share and keep the house, and how can that be unfair? You get what you said you always dreamed of. You now have the freedom to meet another man or men. You should be happy. I stood up and left the table. When I returned to the house after spending a couple of hours in the Pontiac, Amanda was in her room, so I went down to the basement and checked the recorder. There was nothing interesting on it, so I rewound it and went to bed. I set the alarm for five and then passed out. I got up and left the house before Amanda left her room and went to the cafe to have breakfast. I had an extremely busy day and didn't have much free time to think about the situation with Amanda. That evening, I decided to dine out, and after eating, I went to Bud's Bar for a couple of beers and a game of pool. I left at about a quarter past ten, and when I got home, the lights were off and Amanda's car was in the garage, so I assumed she had gone to bed. I checked the recorder and found only one interesting call. Hello? Good evening, girlfriend. What do you want, Sally? To restore your good reputation. How? Got another single guy who needs someone to get into your group? Don't be like that, friend. We were friends long before I met Ralph and was involved in this scene, and let's not forget that it was you who always pressed me for more information about what Ralph and I were doing. Fine. You made your point. The reason I'm calling is to see if you can have lunch with me tomorrow. I think I have a way for you to get Rob to give up the divorce. What is this? I'll tell you at lunch. I'm still working on the intricacies of it. Does Sarducci at noon suit you? I can be there. Don't panic. If I get there first and when you get there, you'll see me sitting with a guy. I'm not trying to set you up with anyone, but if my plan is going to work, we'll need it. We must run. See you at noon. I fell asleep trying to wrap my head around the fact that Sally was trying to help Amanda save her marriage. Sally doesn't even like me, and never has. Of course, the fact that the feeling was mutual might have something to do with it. In the morning I was up and out of the house before Amanda was up, and I had plenty of free time during the day to think about Sally and Amanda's lunch date. Did Sally really have an idea that would help Amanda? Or was the dinner just a ploy to try to get Amanda into the open relationship scene? I decided to go straight home and not eat out. Or go out for a beer after work. Before I could make that decision, Amanda called me and asked if I would be home for dinner or if I would be late again. I told her I would be home around my usual time. When I got home, dinner was ready and Amanda had set it on the table. Conversation was minimal and pretty much boiled down to please pass the mashed potatoes, or would you like some more green beans? After we ate, but before clearing the table, Amanda slid an envelope across the table toward me. As I reached for it, Amanda said, Sally called me last night and she told me she had an idea about how I could possibly save our marriage. I met her for lunch and she had a man from her group with her, but he was there as a paralegal and notary. Sally explained her idea and I agreed with her, and Abe the paralegal, left us and returned twenty minutes later with the document you are holding in your hands. I signed it, and he notarized my signature. All you have to do is read it and then sign where it says, I accept this agreement. What if I don't accept this? Why not? It gives you everything you say you want and then some. I opened the envelope, took out the document, and read it. 
it was essentially a legally enforceable post-nuptial agreement that stated that if Amanda violated any of the provisions of the document and it resulted in divorce, she would leave the marriage leaving nothing but her personal property. The two main points were adultery and any attempt on her part to force me to join her in sexual relations with others. I took a pen from my shirt pocket and signed the line that read, I accept this agreement. Then Amanda said, There is one thing that needs to happen that is not mentioned in the document. What is this? I asked. This won't take effect until we make love. And she began to unbutton her blouse. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.